Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Last time we received a cooler from Scythe, people weren't happy with our test results, even though Scythe themselves, they verified our testing with their own testing. But you know, it's the internet, you just can't please everyone. Because they trust our testing methodology, they reached out to us again and sent us another cooler to put through its paces. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that button right now and turn on that little bell to receive notifications. We upload basically every single day of the week, so do yourself a big old favor and make sure you're subscribed. Scythe sent over their Mugen 5 Revision Big Tower CPU cooler, so I thought I would test it on the AMD Ryzen 7 2700X and See if it's worth your hard-earned money. Let's do it. Let's start off with what's in the box. It comes with mounting bracket hardware for Intel sockets for both 11.5x sockets and the 20xx sockets. It also includes mounting hardware for AMD's AM4 socket. It comes with a backing plate that can be used with many popular sockets, but for our use case, we're using the AM4 socket, so we won't be using this backing plate. If you're using this cooler on an AM4 socket, you'll need to use the factory backing plate that comes with your motherboard to install it. It comes with a 120mm fan with a maximum RPM of 1200 RPM, as well as a tube of thermal compound which appears to be very similar to Noctua NTH1. The insulation is very straightforward. It's basically the same as any other tower cooler and should take you anywhere between 3 and 5 minutes to install it. The construction itself is pretty nice and the heat pipes seem to be very well placed. Scythe has also offset the mounting hardware so it has better RAM clearances. And speaking of that, the main question we always get with these tower coolers is if the RAM and GPU clearance is decent. In the case of the Mugen 5 Revision B, the fan does not sit close enough to the RAM for it even to interfere with it. So yeah, they, they really thought about this when they were making the cooler. Yeah, I know there are people out there who love to fixate our numbers, so quite obviously <laughs> we tested the cooler to appease the temperature gods. Let's talk about what we did and how we tested this. All the tests were conducted on two of our open air test benches, both with the Ryzen 7 2700X, both on the ASRock X470 Tai Chi, both with the latest BIOSes installed as well. Both CPUs on both of these test benches were set to stock clocks for the purpose of establishing a consistent baseline. For these tests, we let both systems idle for approximately one hour with each cooler installed to get a proper idle temperature. And we used the Ida64 stress test for one hour with each cooler to get a proper set of temperatures for a fully loaded CPU. We ran the Scythe Mugen 5 Revision B test alongside two other coolers that we have on hand right now. We used the Cooler Master Master Air MA620P air cooler and the Corsair H100 i Pro. All fan and pump speeds were set to 100% so there wasn't any variance in airflow potential. Our ambient temperature that we recorded for all of these tests was 18 degrees Celsius. The temperatures recorded were the TDI temperatures which is the correct temperature to record for Ryzen CPUs. At idle with the Scythe Mugen 5 Revision B, we saw the average temperature at 29.4 degrees Celsius after one hour of idle which is approximately 11.4 degrees over ambient. At idle with the Scythe Mugen 5 Revision B, we see the maximum recorded temperature at 38.9 degrees after one hour of idle, which is approximately 20.9 degrees over ambient. At full load with the Scythe Mugen 5 Revision B, we see the average temperature at 72.6 degrees after one hour which is approximately 54.6 degrees over ambient. At full load with the Scythe Mugen 5 Revision B, we see the maximum recorded temperature at 82.9 degrees Celsius after one hour, which is approximately 64.9 degrees over ambient. At full load with all three coolers, the temperatures were very close to one another, which, which kind of surprised me, given how quiet the Mugen 5 Revision B is, because we had the fan cranked up all the way. Compared to our last outing with the Scythe Cooler, the Mugen 5 performed way better than expected. The numbers just don't lie. Since this is somewhat a review, <laughs> I didn't feel like it was fair to change the fan to a more efficient one. It doesn't really make sense. You get what you're given and they obviously choose this fan for a reason and I think it's a better fan than most fans that you get with most coolers. 
it's actually, it's, it's, it's pretty decent, I'm not gonna lie. At the end of the day, would I recommend the Scythe Mugen 5 Revision B? I would, I think it's a decent cooler. And for people who want a quiet cooler, seriously, it's really quiet. I like quiet, 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 quiet is good. If you're interested in grabbing one of these coolers, there is a link in the description right now. They're going for around 48 US dollars on Amazon, which I think is pretty good value. If only Scythe made a cooler that fit in a 3RU rack servo enclosure. <laughs> if you have any more questions about this cooler, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. And honestly, I was a bit surprised at how good this cooler performed given how the last cooler we had from Scythe performed. And yeah, you guys didn't like the results in the comment section, but that's that, what's what happened. That's what happens. You know, not everything is exactly as you would expect all of the time. Simple as that. Mm -hmm.